Vincent Hall and welcome to Anyone Can Draw, Paint and Create. Notice this time I did not say another episode. Although it is another episode, this one's a little more special because it's our final episode on the Vincent Hall television channels and on YouTube. Since the restrictions are relaxed somewhat now that the COVID virus has come down in its intensity around the Vincent Hall community and we have some new more relaxed rules on participation in the art center we don't need to do the online video i really appreciate everyone that tuned in with me every wednesday or sometimes even earlier when they found out it was on youtube to follow along with our drawing lessons it's almost a year ago this week that we started this whole journey into the unknown territory of the covid pandemic and while it's not over by any means we are finally seeing a light at the end of the tunnel and I'm able to have more people down in the art center. So don't fear if you want to keep learning about drawing and painting and photography, you're welcome to join us in the art center. We have classes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The schedule is posted outside the door of room 122, as well as on the calendar for each month's activities. I hope you take advantage of coming down to learn if you've enjoyed any of these processes it's even more fun in person because we get to interact in real time and you get the camaraderie of the other artists in the art center we're a lot of fun also to that end i want to let you know that after a whole year's hiatus our art exhibit in spring is back yes we will be having our art exhibit in the kathy martin building ballroom on the weekend of May 21st. More information will come out later. It won't exactly be the same as previous art shows due to the fact that we still have to follow COVID restrictions, but at least we're able to get all of our artwork and our artists in one place at the same time. And the rest of the Vincent Hall community can come through to enjoy viewing all of their work in a much more spacious and deserving environment than just hanging on the wall in the art show or art center rather sorry so please join us on may 21st mark your calendar for that weekend like i said we'll have plenty of more information coming that's several months away in the meantime i thought i would finish our online series with an artist that i discovered relatively recently but i do enjoy his work his name is grant hafner Grant is only 43 years old, and I say only because that means he's much younger than me, and he lives in Long Island, New York. What I like best about Grant is he's self-taught, and that shows you that you don't have to go to art school and you don't have to get all these degrees and things hanging on the wall. Now I'm starting to sound like the Wizard of Oz. You don't need a certificate to show that you have courage or whatever, but you also don't need one to show that you're an artist. You can be self-taught as his work will attest. And I'm going to show you some of that work online in a few minutes. But what Grant does is get the idea of the open road. You have to find what your muse is in art. Maybe it's people, animals, portraits of family. Maybe it's abstracts, maybe flowers. It could be still life. Whatever it is that motivates you to want to create, that's what we're after when we do these art lessons. So Grant does the open road. He said when he gets in his truck, he feels renewed. He enjoys the windows down, the smells, the scents, and all of those things. And he does very simple landscapes based on looking at what he sees in front of him in the windshield. Here's an example. I printed one out. I Googled a picture so I could follow along with the open road concept that Grant Hafner does. My picture, all I did was Google open road, New Mexico. I picked a state that I really enjoy visiting. You could Google and pick anyone, or maybe you have a photo you'd like to use. And it doesn't have to be a road, but we are going to do something that this road incorporates, and that's the entire picture is going to be done with line. That's right, we're even interpreting this mountain as line work. It's going to be fun, it's going to be a challenge, so let's get started. As you recall last week in our second of three episodes, today being the third, on bold color, we were using something to inspire a palette. So I am going to do the same thing so I'm not all over the place with every color pencil I have because actually I have way too many color pencils, but I'm going to narrow my palette and this time I was inspired by 
an Easter decoration. And it reminds me of spring, so it doesn't have to be Easter per se, but there's like bunnies and flowers and they're all in these bright, cheerful colors. And I always look at March as the harbinger of spring and using these colors will hopefully get us there, at least in spirit. I took the liberty of taping down my paper because I thought I would just pull out all the stops and do everything we've done. And interestingly, you could use the tape as a way to get the perspective because what we're going to do is draw a straight line for our horizon line. Now, I know there's mountains behind this, but I'm drawing the flat line here where this kind of the flatlands meet the mountains. And then one point pretty much smack in the middle where my road seems to disappear. Notice on my picture in New Mexico, I even have these ubiquitous telephone poles that show up a lot in Grant Hafner's work, as you'll see in a minute. Anyway, time to get started drawing this horizon line. Now I'm going to use a T-square, move this around, but you can use a ruler, you can use a book, you can use whatever you want. And I am just going to, in my color palette, pick a color that I know you'll be able to see and figure out, based on my paper, just about where I want my horizon line. If your paper is close to the size of your image, it shouldn't be a problem to just kind of line them up like I'm doing now. And then I can see where my horizon line is going to go. Once you draw in your horizon line, you're going to put a dot. That's your vanishing point. So I am going to kind of put my dot. It's just a little bit to the right of center on this picture. So if I go halfway and go to the right, eh, roughly about here, I have where my road goes. It's simply a matter now of figuring out where does my road end. So if I know my road ends about this far up on paper, and hopefully you can see that over here, and I know that it ends a out this little further up on this side but not by too much just a scooch and I put my two points all I have to do is pretty much connect the dots now I know my road comes down and then it goes much wider because this road is on a bit of a hill it kind of rolls a little bit so if I just draw straight I'll look like I'm in the desert and this wasn't exactly that there's a little bit of bumps and those bumps make this road more interesting and I'll put my little bumps in this way. Then, right where this road kind of disappears into the rolling hills, I'm going to put where my yellow line for the highway will be. And I don't have to make this road have a yellow line. I'm just gonna draw in these little, I guess you could pass on the right, <laughs> the, the passing on the right signs. And notice I'm just drawing rectangles, but they get bigger as they get closer to me. Now, this is really hard to see. The printer didn't print it, but there is another teeny little thin line that goes through here and goes back to the edge, but we really won't even see that. After that, you can just sort of eyeball where you want mountains if you have them, and that's what I'm going to do. I notice that there's a dip here, then it goes back up again, then it kind of tapers down. And I'm glad that it's not the same on both sides. There's another little mountain outcropping here and I'm just going to pretty much leave that one alone. There is however a line that goes straight across and then comes down. You don't have to do the west. I mean you can google any kind of place you'd like but I think it's fun to try a road to start this because you can really look at Grant's work and then try to make it your own. Now as for the clouds since I'm going to do those in a different color I'm not going to draw those in right now but they've already helped me out because they're already lines. So these clouds will work great. I don't know if I wanna put in the uh, telephone poles or not. Maybe I will, but I'm gonna just leave that go for now. I am gonna draw this line in here. And then interestingly, there's like a side line that comes along the edge of the road that's actually the um, landscape, but it creates another place for a line which I like, this one's down further, tapers out. I'm just right here and drawing across. So now I've got my lines blocked in. Oops, I almost forgot the white lines, which are orange in my picture here. And I'm just drawing those in for the edge of the road itself. Any other additional line that you can find on your picture will help give you something to look at to use as a guidepost for the rest of the picture. 
Now I think I'm fine and I'm ready to pick my colors. But before I do, let's take a look at some of Grant Hafner's work. This is a prime example of Grant Hafner's work. It's unique and it is also easily recognizable as his style. This lesson reminded me very much of one of my first drawing lessons when I was learning one point perspective, which was simply a horizon line, a vanishing point, which can kind of be this windy road here, but the vanishing point's pretty much there. And then we drew telephone poles. It got progressively smaller on one side of the road so that we could understand how perspective worked. I like that he was able to use something so simple in its intent, but make it into a dramatic piece of art all on his own. So as we finish up our Anyone Can Draw, Paint, and Create series for now, we are looking at going back to our roots, so to speak, which was simple line drawing, but this time taking all the elements we've learned, gradients, color blending, color theory, um, picking out different color schemes that we can use, and then using the, the foundation, rather, for all of our line work, which is a simple one line, one color as we go through and then filling in the lines as different widths, thicknesses, and direction. A line drawing doesn't have to just be one direction. We can have them go front and back. As we can see here in another one of Grant Hafner's pieces, which was of the red rocks, and he made them red, <laughs> you can see that he used vertical lines. When does a line become a shape? It's up for debate, but these could technically be very fat lines or they could be shapes. But you can see how he utilizes line, horizontal and vertical, to bring the eye into the center point of the picture. Now this one does have an element of surrealism because we're also seeing colors of the sky back here interpreted and then more of the canyon above. So you might like this style, you might not like this style, but whatever it is, it's easy to do. We're gonna be working our way through a Grant Hafner inspired piece, and we will see where that takes us, and I'll show you more at the end. I just wanted to show you one more to show you it doesn't have to just be lines and roads. This one he did of a lighthouse, again, remembering that he's inspired by his East Coast upbringing and a little schoolhouse along with the lighthouse. And so again, even though it's a rectangle, there's still a lot of lines involved. So he's maintained the core of his artistic style, even though this one has buildings, whereas some of these road pieces are more indicative of his work, which is simply the road, the sky, and these ubiquitous telephone poles. Well, I hope that gave you some inspiration on some things you can try color-wise and or picture. And I've decided based on my little Easter sculpture that I'm using for my sample, that I'm going to start with the road in the middle and I'm going to use the blue and the green for the road. So I think I'm going to use the green for the asphalt and just lay in that color. And again, you can do all the blending and I might switch to a different color pencil, my Derwent ink tents for the sky. I, again, this is a work in progress, so I'm just thinking about it. Also, remember, even in bold color, white will work. We're trying not to use a lot of browns and grays and all those other things that are considered the um, neutral color values. And keep in mind that each of your colors, even if they're intense, bold colors, have warm and cool properties. So this green is a cooler green, and I wanted to use that for the road. You could go over and around, or you don't have to have your passing lane things here if you don't want to. I'm gonna blend this in later. But I decided to go with a cooler green. This is still green, but it's going to read warm because there's a lot of yellow tones in it. So watch what you select, and make sure that what you pick works for the color values and family that you want to use. You don't want to overdo the colors or the colors become, well, they can become mud. Too many colors blended together aren't going to give you what you're looking for. And I'm just going to go around the edge here a little bit. You can cross hat shade, which means just going different directions. That'll help you blend things in a little bit. I'm going to do my left-handed hook here and blend in on this side. And that's where I see the asphalt, then I skip where the white is, and I see it again here. So I'm interpreting this 
very much as a flat color. We're not doing shading. Yes, there's lots of all these minute shadows, but the beauty of Grant's work is that it's almost a poster or pop art like in how he handles color. The reason I like this for our finale is because it almost brings us full circle. And for those of you that are yet to want to try to do a drawing, this one should be the least intimidating because it's just lines. And you're probably saying, okay, I can't draw a straight line. Well, none of these are really straight, so you're good. You can join us and it won't be a problem. Now I picked the blue to represent the yellow because I thought, well, why not just do complementary colors or although yellow and purple are complementary, I wanted to keep something that was cooler in a warm tone. So it's more like I'm doing analogous colors right now because I have blue and I have green and they are next to each other on the color wheel. Okay, so now that we have the road in, I have to make some decisions on the land. I don't want the land to look like the road. And I like these warm tones, and I have some warm tones on my inspiration piece, so I'm going with my yellows, pinks, and reds. So I've got several of these, and orange, because there's orange in there too. But I will start with the pink, I'm going to interpret these light tones back here as the pink and just kind of color these in. Now, to keep this more of a Grant Hafner inspired landscape, I'm gonna break up some of these areas and make them more horizontal stripes than what you see. The mountains I'm going to do as vertical lines. So I think it'll be fun because you'll get to see and you don't have to make them even all straight. This doesn't have to look like the stripes on a flag. You can come up and down a little bit to get different shapes and shadows. I'm just following some of these little lines here. So your lines can go thicker or thinner, but the key is it's mostly all line. And they can dip down. I'm just trying to show some of these little ridges that we see going across this side, it's more defined for sure. So I'm just interpreting where I see lines. And again, remember all the things we've learned all over this almost full year can be brought back into play. You can do things that involve um, blending colors. You can do overlap. I'm going to now use yellow in some of these other spaces. This is kind of fun. It's almost therapeutic because you don't have to worry about things that are realistic. And if you overshoot the runway like I did right there, that's okay too, because who's gonna know the difference? It's your interpretation of the landscape. Okay, let's see. This here, I think I'm going to interpret more as a yellow too, just to bring it closer in. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to kind of reverse it so that my yellow is closest to the road on this side. And then I'm going to bring in the color I haven't used yet, which is this bright orange, red, it's um, poppy red actually, and kind of use this sparingly because this red can take over the whole painting or drawing if you let it. So you kind of want to balance it out a little bit. And I'm going to leave some tiny little lines white for now because I wanna see later what I have color-wise and what I need more of to unify my picture. Now, down here, this is a darker color and I wanna use a darker tone in here. So I think I'll go ahead with this red and bring this down in this way, but coming the other direction now we have our basic part of our bottom landscape done time to look in these mountains and see what we want to do and i did decide i wanted to go more vertical you don't have to change all the colors and i really like these blues and purples up here so i'm going to start with this lavender color and i'm looking at where all the different peaks are in the mountain and i'm just going to kind of interpret those as different triangle shapes, but all these triangle shapes are gonna become 
line. And they're gonna be different colors of lines and things like that. So just kind of trying to block this off a little bit. Some of the lines then come back this way. You can make this as simple or as complex as you want. But if you're interpreting the mountains, just try to keep more of a linear approach to the whole thing. Okay, so now I can start working on my background mountains here, which I'm going to use the lavender to meet up with these other shapes, which look, look like diamonds. It's only gonna be on this side. As it comes over here, it's not nearly as craggy of a mountain. It's more soft and in the background. Any of you that like the Shenandoah Mountains, um, you know, you might have pictures of those too. They already have a bluish tone, the Blue Ridge. So maybe you're using a lot of blues, but brighter ones than you would normally see. And then there's another line here. So where we had the one line, now we're drawing the second line in, in true Grant Hafner form. And I'm just gonna go through here and fill this in. So follow along. was fun and fast, faster than normal again. And I know some of you are enjoying that speed stuff. I wish I could really draw that fast, but we got the basics of our Grant Hafner landscape down. Now it's time to go back in and first tackle these clouds. And then we're gonna look at what we're going to do with these telephone poles, which I'm still debating, but I might put them in now that I look at this a little bit better. First though, I'm going to look at this because I did have all of my cool colors up here and warm colors down here. So I think it's time to give a little unity. I'm going to bring this lavender color into the white areas of my picture. I am gonna leave the white road lines alone probably though, but where I see this divide in the highway and I had drawn that line in, I'm going to do those as purple or lavender as the case may be, little lines because they do kind of loop themselves back towards this vanishing point of the road as we see it go back here. So that is a little shading on the road. Like I promise you, not too much though. And by doing some of these cooler colors in the warm colors down here, just here and there, it's gonna help unify your picture. So I'm just looking for some of my white lines. I don't even have to go all the way across, just kind of filling them in. Conversely, I'm going to take some of my warmer colors, I'll use this pink, and fill in some of my mountain areas so that, again, I have a little bit more matching figure and ground so that this starts to look like a unified piece even though the colors are very different. And I think that's, oh, there's a few here. I tried to keep my homage to Grant Hafner alive by keeping some horizontal lines in this background, even though I didn't really see any. And I can even add a few more here. They don't have to be completely horizontal. Maybe I'll just do diagonal on this side of the mountain and then use this color to darken it in a little bit. That's fine, because we're gonna blend all this in anyway. And I see one more. Okay, for the sky. I'm looking at what color do I want to do the sky? And again, this already has a bright blue, so I could use some of my blues, which I might do just to uh, make it interesting. Or I can turn this more into a sunset sky, which would be kind of fun. But as promised, I want to use my Derwent Ink Tense pencils for this because the sky, I want to get more of almost like a painterly approach. So I'm moving these out of the way. And... I'm going to look at what colors I have here. So I think I'm going to keep my blue blue, <laughs> if that helps. And I'm going to pick this bright blue here, which is called iris blue. And sorry about that, come up here to the top 
and just color this in because I'm going to take the clouds and turn those white clouds into some interesting colors. I just want to see where my blue is on my sky. And sometimes by just drawing in the color of where one thing is, you're able to then make reference points to where everything else should go. There we go. And there we got this little thing. And then there's a bluish haze down here, but I'm not gonna do that because I really want to keep my colors for what I wanna do for my skies. So I'm going to go bold here with this one and I'm going to use fuchsia. Can't get much brighter than a fuchsia sky. And everything that's white, I am going to interpret as fuchsia. Now, there's not a lot of white here. You think white clouds, it's all white, but it's not. There's a lot of other beautiful tones. And that's what makes Grant Hafner's work genius, is that he sees all the nuances and breaks them down into a vertical, horizontal, or diagonal line. So I'm just looking for my lightest values of the clouds. And it's probably lightest right in here. It's a pretty big area. And remember with the ink tents pencils, they look pretty blah until we add water. So once they're wet, that's gonna give them their oomph factor. Okay, so now down here for this other color, which is like an, the off-white, if I used fuchsia for white, I don't wanna go too stray too far from the red family. So I think I'm going to use the orange color here, which is tangerine, if you're following along and have these pencils. So let's lay this color in, and then we'll see where we go. Okay then, we have our sky blocked in, and what's going to really help this look like a Grant Hafner picture is to get the sky a little more painterly and to blend in all of our colors. And then at the end, I decided, yes, I will add those telephone poles because I'm keeping myself true to the artist that inspired me. For the water part of our colored pencils, I have a thin brush and a medium watercolor brush. You don't need to have too many. And again, we wanna stay true to grant, so we're only gonna paint horizontal where we have horizontal lines. That way, it might take a little more patience and a little more time, but we're able to blend in these colors. So what I'm gonna do is actually get my blues painted in and then go back. If it moves around a little bit, that's fine, but I'm trying to keep this from getting too blended because Grant did not really blend his picture so much. I'll just come straight across here now that I started. But by keeping the brush clean, so I'm constantly dabbing the brush into a paper towel, it's not gonna pick up too many of these other pigments and I'm able to get these really nice horizontal lines. And I'm using my bigger brush for this. So this is a nice brush challenge in and of itself to force you to go one direction or the other, or both, you can go back and forth, but not too brushy. Notice I'm holding the brush and I'm just moving my whole wrist. So my wrist, my elbow, everything moves with me. And that way I'm able to keep a straight line. People always say, oh, I can't make that so steady. It's fine, and if you wanna hold on as a brace onto your arm or elbow, that works too. And where these colors, created thin little lines, I'm leaving them because that's exactly what Grant Hafner would do in his landscapes. And we are trying to maintain our true to artist inspiration. All right, I think that's pretty blended. I'm just going back through now where I can find a few spots that just look a little chalky, don't have the line. And again, our paper will dry and won't be as buckled. If you don't like this buckle look, and again, I'm not using watercolor paper, so it is going to buckle. This is just a basic kind of color pencil paper. Um, just forgot a little spot right here. You can lay a book down after it dries, a couple books, and that'll be fine. Now this is not our water pencil, so we're gonna blend these using some different approaches, including 
hand sanitizer because we're redoing what we've done before. I have a bottle of hand sanitizer that has a spray. So what I thought I would try is see what happens if I spray my work with the hand sanitizer. And you could certainly use um, an, a mister or whatever you might have and then use my brush to try to blend this in. That way I have a nice even amount of sanitizer, which gives a softer blend. It sure does buckle the paper though. So I'm definitely gonna be flattening this with my handy dandy books. I think that's why I saved my books from all my art history classes, because now you can get all that information online, but nothing flattens paper better, as you'll see down the road, than a couple of really heavy, the history of art books. So. That's what I think I will do because wowzy, that hand sanitizer just took off and really did a number on the um, buckling effect of this paper. But I do like the effect of the hand sanitizer. So remember with the barrel color pencils, an alcohol base is going to blend just as well as using any of those markers. Although if you do have the xylene markers, you can use those just as well. I know I'm moving this around a little bit because I just do want you to be able to see despite the fact that it's buckled a little bit here. And you can see how nicely these colors are blending in just using a little bit of alcohol. There we go. Now for the road, because it can get too much of a good thing. I think I'm just gonna spray some of my hand sanitizer into the lid and get the brush wet. And then that way I can go over this with a little more refinement and a little less buckling, although it's still going to buckle. So I'm gonna finish just taking my hand sanitizer over my road and all of the barrel color pencils that I have down here. And we'll be back to see the unbuckled finished product. I've given my picture some time to dry and flatten. And despite my best intentions, we've got a little bit of wrinkling going on, but hey, we're just gonna make it work. And you can see it's a little flatter now. I'm going to draw back into this road and give it more color, a la Grant Hafner. And I'm also going to add my telephone poles. The beauty of these colored pencils, be it the Derwent or the Prismacolor, is they're interchangeable for building up layers. So now I'm going to take my Derwent pencil over some of my green road here and just kind of build in a few lines. One of the things that really drew me to Hafner's work is that the lines on his highway almost remind me of that blurred photography where you see the lights of the cars kind of zooming away in the distance and it gives you that sense of motion. I do believe that that's part of the draw, no pun intended, well, maybe a little bit of his work. And I'm going to add that in by repeating some of the colors I used up here and then blending these with water over the barrel pencils to give a little more sense of color distinction and also to unify the picture somewhat. There's nothing wrong with even just drawing an outline along one picture or even coming along maybe just on this side with a line, you be the judge of what you wanna do. Both sides of your row don't have to even match. Oh, I just decided to color that in by not really meaning to color that in, but that's okay. Now we'll make this one work with another line here and another line here. And then I'll switch back and forth. Just again, getting these beautiful lines that he's done because that's part of the nature of his work. If you're following along here, you're noticing why is that, why am I making like these almost long triangles? To try to show the sense of depth in this picture, we do have to do a little bit of perspective work and that means that these lines are going to get thicker as they come closer to us. And I'll just do one more color in here with this blue just trying to break up some of this green. I like the green, but I also like it a little less flat because his work does have a lot of dynamic quality. And I'm gonna make this side not as wide just to break it up a little bit. Maybe I'll even add a little line here. 
you just play around with it. Kind of be intuitive about what you think might work best for your piece. Like I feel like here I need a darker line and then maybe just shade that in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more done up here too before we call it a day. So I'm gonna go back in with that beautiful fuchsia and just fill in some of my lines that I have that are going on diagonals. Once we get this wet, this will all start to take shape and give us a little more definition because I like the hand sanitizer, but I don't feel like it really came through for me in some parts of this landscape, especially since we're trying to do bold color and we're trying to do a Grant Hafner kind of thing. So before we put in those telephone poles over these wrinkles, <laughs> I'm going to take my brush and I think I'm going to use my wide brush to start and then probably switch to the smaller brush and just kind of fill this in. If I was doing this again, I'd probably, if I wanted it to be more painterly, just go ahead and use those Derwent pencils if you have them. I really feel like the blending on those gives you that Grant Hafner look. Now, if you don't like his look and you feel like it's too much of a good thing, then a softer approach with your regular color pencils might be more of what you're after. Again, you don't want the brush too wet. If the brush is too wet, it's just gonna mush together. So I'm just kind of chasing these little lines up here, which is kind of fun too. Then if the picture leads me to the back, I'll go back up here and use the water to blend this in a little bit more where I have used different colors. So this was this lighter blue and here's that fuchsia that belonged to the Derwent pencils. Just kind of painting these in. If it gets a little thicker up here, I think that's what I want to do anyway, because he had a lot of lines on his highways and some of them were hybrid colors of the two merged together. So I'm making this one more of a purpley color rather than just plain fuchsia because I'm blending the fuchsia in with that blue. Then I'm following here on the thin line. If you wanted to switch to a thin brush here, you can. I think I'll just stick with the bigger one. It's probably easier to follow than me switching out brushes all the time. You can turn your paper. So I am turning this around and going this way. This is so I can maintain control of the brush a little bit better. And I'm gonna blend this in a little bit. So I like kind of sometimes blending the colors. There's that other color in here, picking up these really pretty colors from the Derwent pencils. Okay, now we've got this fuchsia up here that we laid in that I'm just gonna dance a little bit of water over because I'm gonna have to let this dry again if you're doing the water part of the color pencil. And again, you don't have to. I thought also another good idea for this would be to use marker. I know we haven't done a lot with marker, but if you have some markers, those are perfect for doing this kind of a drawing. So now, before I put in my telephone poles, I'm going to let this dry a minute. Sometimes you know why you held on to things, and this was a little graphic design card that I had to do rule lines and shapes from way back in my undergrad days. And I'm going to use this to just, as a straight edge, and I'll use the first one here, I guess, to fill it in, to get my telephone poles. Now you could just use a ruler. I'm just trying to plot in about where I want this pole to go. And I think I want my telephone pole about this high up. And then all we want to do as we get further along, now I'll just use it as a straight edge, is they're going to go back and they're going to get narrower. So they're going to go back on both sides here. They're going to just keep getting smaller. You could plot these out if you want. I'm just eyeballing it about where I want them to go. They don't even have to be perfect in how 
far apart they are, get a little smaller here. I mean, figure if it's out in the desert or somewhere, wherever this might be, they're gonna be pretty small as they get back to the edge. And then just to make them look like a telephone pole or a light pole. I guess they're not telephone poles anymore. They are definitely light poles. <laughs> but I will just add the other line here. I think I'm gonna add the idea of one coming across and I can do that by just kind of stringing some little line wires. Now I'm hearing Glenn Campbell. I am a lineman for the county. <laughs> old song and just kind of end it there. Now what you also can do to make this look like a grant um, piece is you could have one of these telephone or light poles break the plane up here. So I'm not going to do that, but you could, you could have them on both sides. And then the other nice thing is you can draw in some lines and not wet them down just to kind of give this a little more of a drawing sense and that it's not just a painting and also to break up your areas. So if you find that you have areas that look a little mushy, perhaps you can break these down. I think that's part of the beauty of what Grant does is he creates almost an abstract in his landscape. So I'm just going through with a little colored pencil that's black. And I know we said we weren't using those colors, but because we have to have some kind of break for these to be visible, and we are following along with a specific artist, that's what I'm using. And then I'm gonna go back in with my white, because you can always use white to brighten this up, and just follow along some of my areas here that might be too dark, and add a little bit of a white highlight or a straight line to keep going with the whole idea of a Hafner landscape, which is definitely more of an abstract. Something we really didn't touch on, but I'm glad we're doing it for our final episode online. Although if you come down to the Art Center, we'll definitely be doing more of these types of things in the future, so you'll be able to continue the journey. There we go. I can also use this white, like we mentioned before, as a blender which is working really nicely here to kind of soften some of these areas and make this not look too harsh and then bring back some of my lighter lines back in the edge here that might have been somewhat obliterated by all of the blending. Maybe I'll use a line here just to kind of brighten this up. I can also use this to brighten inside the areas of some of the fuchsia that got a little muddy, which I liked at the time, but now I think it just needs more light. So again, once you look at your picture and it's finished, you'll be able to ascertain where you need to go back and perhaps add some blending. That's what I'm gonna do here. I could also come down the edge of these poles, but remember the idea of this is that we're trying to show a sunset or sunrise and that the colors are all kind of coming out from that. So I'm gonna blend this horizontally to get some line texture. Oh, I kind of like that, that's fun. Kind of go across here and blend this stuff in just a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this final episode from our online journey of Anyone Can Draw, Paint, and Create. So here's my Grant Hafner inspired work. And it you know, looks a little bit like what he does. It's, again, I'm a portrait painter by trade and drawer, but not this style, but it's fun to try something new. And I might incorporate some of what he does in my other work. I hope that you give us a chance to come down to the Art Center and give a class a try. What have you got to lose? It, no pressure at all. See if you like it. See if there's something you might wanna learn a little bit more of, because learning is what keeps us going and keeps our brains engaged in finding new and interesting things to focus on. That said, I'll be back in April for three more featured artist series. We have some new artists that had joined our program at the beginning of the pandemic, and now that they're up to speed with more art that we can share with us, we're going to learn more about three of our most recent members to the Art Center starting in April, leading up to our art show in May. So I won't say until next week because I won't be seeing you on 
the video, but if you come down to the Art Center, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, stay safe, be well, enjoy the springtime weather that's coming, Vincent Hall. I'm so glad to be part of the community, and I will see you in room 122. I thought I'd share with you some of Grant Hafner's thoughts on art and creativity as you look at the examples that follow. When I drive, I feel completely alive. For a small moment, in between this place and that, I'm free from reality. My truck and I become a motion of blurred color, barreling through space and time. I like to keep my window open to listen to the sounds that traveling makes, to enjoy the smell of the landscape. Every trip is a new one. Not one sunset is the same. On the road, I am part of the painting. I am movement, color, sound, adventure, and emotions. This is my landscape. This is my art. Grant Hafner.